come from two points of scripture real quick, but you can just turn to the first one for me. And this scripture right here is going to help support my thoughts for this morning. Amen? It's going to help support my main scripture. Amen? Second, um, Book of Acts chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. It reads, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, somebody say suddenly. Suddenly. There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Now just flip your Bibles over to the book of Genesis chapter 11. Genesis chapter 11. I'm, going, I'm reading from the NIV version, so if you follow along, yours may read a little different. It says, now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As men moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. Let me stop right there and kind of break that part down for you. This is after the flood. This is after the sons of Noah had went out and started having, you know, uh, having children and, uh, and repopulating the earth because God told Noah for him and his family to repopulate the earth again. So now here we have them. They're coming out of the ark. They're on dry land again, and they find themselves in a plain. And God had told them to disperse. God had told some, listen, y'all, go east. Go west, go north, go south, go southeast, go southwest. But they decided to stay right in Shinar. They decided to stay right in the plain. They decided to go in direct violation of God's word. Man, honey. God says, go. They say, we going to stay. God says, move. They say, we going to chill. God says, hop over there. They said, no, nah, I'm going to just twiddle my fingers right here. So at this point, they are in direct violation with the word of God. Okay. Verse 3. They said to each other, come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. The Bible says they use brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves with a, with a, build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens. They said to each other, come. Can I make it plain for you? Amen. If everybody who was here yesterday, everybody, all the people who passed by and came by and stopped in their car, and all of us was here at the exact same time, and I said, okay, everybody, it's time to eat the hot dogs. Yeah. Only the people who knew English would come and follow, knowing that it's time to eat hot dogs. The people who spoke Spanish would not understand what I said. The people who spoke French would not understand what I said. The Bible says that they all spoke the same language, and they all had a common thought. They all had a common mind. My thought, my, my, the thing that I want you to know today is be careful of the people who speak the same language as you. And what language are you talking about? I don't say any language that's not, that, that's not a talk God. in the plains of Shinar. Revelation to God's word. So he said, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heaven so we may make a name for ourselves and not be scattered over the face of the whole earth. When you read that at first, if you didn't know the previous chapter, you would say, well, what's wrong with that? You know, these people, they, they just got out of the ark and, well, they, their grandparents just got out of the ark and, and we have all of this land here. Notice that he says, he says, they use brick instead of stone. That means where they were, the provision was not there for them. They made their own provision. Be careful of where you are. If you find yourself in a situation and there is no provision there for you, you don't belong there. What do you mean, Pastor? If you find yourself somewhere going through something and you don't have peace inside of you, then you know that what you're going through is probably not of God. Because I don't care what you go through. I don't care how many bills you get. I don't care how many debt collectors call you. I don't care what they say. I don't care what mom and them said. I don't 
care what Papa said. I don't care what anybody said. But when you know that God is with you and you have that peace, Woo! you still hold your head up high. Yeah. You still broke with your shoulders. Yeah. Straight. You still don't put your head in the oil and walk like you got it all together. Yeah. First of all, God told them this verse. God said, go all, all over the earth. The problem with what they was doing, they were trying to rival God. Yeah. Come on now. What do you mean, Pastor, they were trying to rival God? The Bible says that there was someone named Lucifer. The Bible says that there, he, there was no other angel like him. He was one of the most beautiful creations that God had ever made. The Bible says that he had diamonds and rubies and jewels and topazes and sapphires all over him. That's how beautiful he was. In the presence of God, you should just come by and shine on him. Y'all remember those little disco lights that he had? Uh, Come on now. Don't yeah. think you don't know about the disco lights. Come on. Now, some of y'all from that party, people. Some of y'all from that party. Oh, now, like, you don't know about the disco lights, amen? So that's what used to happen. All you did is shine one light on that disco light, and it would light up the whole room. When God used to come by, he used to just shine just a little bit of light on Lucifer, and Lucifer would begin to light up the place. But the Bible says that pride was found inside of him. He said, I want to be like the Most High God. Here's what's happening with these people. They know that God sits high and look low, so they say, we want to be like God. Let us build up a tower so we can sit and look eyeball to eyeball to God. They said we want to sit at the doorsteps just with God. So they were in direct violation of God's word. And not only that, they were trying to rival God's word. You see, okay, what's wrong with that? So they had pride. What does the Bible say about pride? Before fall. Before pride goes before fall. Look how good God is. Amen. Can I be real for a second? Amen. Amen. Before you were saved, before you were born again, before you knew John 3.16, wasn't there some crazy stuff that you did that if it had not been for God, you wouldn't be here right now? Amen. Amen. Before you said Jesus is my Lord and Savior, some of us did some crazy stuff. Some of us was involved with drugs, some of us was involved with guns, some of us was involved with sleeping with everybody, some of us was involved with drinking all types of stuff, but somehow God still got you here. Oh, man. You need to let the devil go. Guess what? All that stuff you did, I'm still here. I'm still here. Whatever trap you set before me, I may have fell in it for a little while, but I'm still here. Amen. The Bible says, before destruction, God will give warning. How many of y'all was hard-headed like me? Come on. Come on. How many of y'all was hard-headed like me? Amen. I mean, I, if, if I had a dollar for every time my father said, don't do that. I'd be driving my Lamborghini right now. So here, these people are, they're hard-headed and they're slick and they're trying to get around what God has told them to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let me go on, let me go on. I'm almost there, I'm almost there. Verse 5 says, But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the men were building. The Lord said, If as one people speak in the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Nothing they plan to do will be impossible before them. So the Lord, verse 8, so the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. I'm going to close real quick. Let me give you my thought. Just find, find a neighbor closest to you and just, I need you to just look at them and say, neighbor. Neighbor. When you and I. When you and I. And just go like this. Find somebody else and just say, when you and I. When you and I. Shake your head, shake your head. When I said you and I, I mean, for the married couples, y'all y'all can understand what I mean. I mean, when I when I met my wife and, and you know, we started to date and things got serious, and I told her, I said, you know, when you and I, uh -oh. I ain't had to say when you and I hook up, when you and I get married, I just say when you and I, and she can feel like thinking, 
your soul. Amen. Hey, Amen. Hey, keep it. I'm quite sure. When you got with Sister Lila, and you said, You and me? Yeah. That's, that's all it took. That's all it took. Amen. By the way, when you look at Sister Barbara, you and me, we got that thing going on together. Amen. You and I. Amen. When the saints of God come together, it is something that God will do. Amen. So when you and I, come together, God is going to do a man. When we come together in one accord, when we come together in the body of Christ, God shows up on the scene. When we get together and say, it ain't about me. When we get together and say, it's not about Wayne. It's not about Southern Miller. It's not about Lopez. It's not about Shore. It's not even about MCDC. When we get together for the name of Jesus, when we get together for God, God is going to show up on the scene. Your problem, that's God. 
Can't know it.